yellow. Hello? Yes, Clarence. Hey, Mr. President, how are you? Oh, I'm pretty good. Still grinding away. Hope you're doing all right. Well, uh, with your kind of inspiration, the whole country's doing fine, and I'm right along with it. Well, we're doing, we're doing the best we know how. Looks like you tell me today we're going to try to move on closer about next Saturday or maybe Monday. Yes, well, I was hoping very much uh, I could have... I know you're so busy that you uh, have a uh, time seeing people, but I was hoping we'd get a chance to tell you the way we size up the situation on this uh, poll tax amendment. And um, I think we can win on that, and I think we can win in a way that will keep everybody happy. And uh, I hope so much we'd have a chance to uh, say a word or two with you about that. Well, you sure will, Clarence, you want to. Uh, I've, uh, I'm not a lawyer, and I've left it up to Nick. I told him in drafting the bill that I would like to lower it to 18 years, and I would like to repeal a poll tax. Yeah. And he said that he would uh, see what he could do about it, and he came back and told me he thought that uh, we would uh, be less likely to get what we wanted if we followed those steps because he didn't believe that you could do it and make it stand up uh, by statute and i'd had an old solicitor he used to be icky's undersecretary alvin Wirtz, who was my lawyer always and he made me vote against repealing by statute uh, about 15 times on that ground and uh, uh, so uh, when Nick came back and said that he, he didn't believe that that could be done, that's why the bill went up that way. I would like to see it repealed if it, uh, if it could be repealed. And I was hopeful that, that he and uh, y'all could get together some way and get something that would stand up and would satisfy his doubts and y'all's hopes. <laughs> Good, that's a nice combination. And we've been working along that line, I think, that uh, Nick has about concluded that under the present state of the law, the Supreme Court could uh, declare that a poll tax is unconstitutional if it deprives people of the right to vote because of race. And I believe that the court's position would be strengthened if the Congress would uh, make a finding that the poll tax is discriminatory and would say that it is banned as a result of the statute. Uh, I, I really don't think we'd lose on that basis. And, um, I, after all, nobody can know what the Supreme Court will do until uh, the case gets up there. But I think Nick has uh, uh, modified his position somewhat, and I imagine it wouldn't be too hard for him to come the rest of the way. There are a great many people up in Congress who um, feel that uh, there's very good reason for getting rid of the poll tax by statute, and some of them, are, as you know, are good lawyers. Well, I'm very anxious to get rid of it any way you can, uh, legally and constitutionally. I'm in a pretty bunch of a box because uh, for 15 years I've been voting for the constitutional amendments, campaigning on radio and television. I bought. $2,400 worth of time with Mr. Rayburn and I eight or ten years ago uh, trying to get Texas to repeal it. We lost uh, yes. our campaign last uh, time uh, trying to get them to repeal it, and we lost. I went down Jack Brooks' district, campaigned, and went to Dallas all over it. But uh, uh, if he can ever get the point or any good lawyer that I have to trust that he says that we can legally do it, I would uh, I would have another approach to it. Well, uh, Paul uh, Freund, who's up at Harvard University... Yes, I know he's very distinguished. I heard him give the Felix Frankfurter funeral oration the other day. Well, he has taken the position uh, in a memorandum which he sent to uh, Senator Ted Kennedy that uh, this can be done by statute. And... Um, as I said, in our conversations with Nick, he's been very friendly, and um, I think uh, his position has uh, changed a little, particularly because of this uh, latest Supreme Court decision. The latest uh, Supreme Court decision in Virginia. Virginia, Virginia Post, you know. Mm -hmm. And in it, the court said that historically, this tax was used in Virginia for the purpose of discriminating against Negroes. 
to me, that seemed like a pretty good signal that the court would uh, uphold a statute passed by Congress. Well, you concentrate your efforts and reasoning on him, because uh, I'm not a lawyer, and uh, I don't want him to feel that I'm trying to override him or run out on him because I picked him primarily. Because I thought you all had confidence in him, and I thought that he was the best to, to do it. I had, they had some Texas fellows they wanted me to bring in, and I, I finally concluded that he would be the best for the nation, and that's what I did. Well, we were delighted, Mr. President, when you appointed him, and we have a wonderful relationship. Our disagreements are intellectual, not uh, emotional. I know that. I know that. Uh, I talked to a fellow a while ago that I was quite impressed with. I asked him if he knew you, and he said he did, and then I asked him if he knew you favorably. And he said yes, he thought that you were friendly. But I'd like to have your evaluation of him. His name's Jackson, and he's, uh, he's from Kansas. Yes, Mr. President, I can give you an unequivocal and enthusiastic uh, uh, endorsement of him. I, he worked with us uh, and when we were trying to get the civil rights bill through, came up here at his own expense and uh, worked with the uh, members on the Republican side. Uh, he helped us get it through, get the bill through the Rules Committee. Uh, uh, you know, we had to do a little maneuvering with some of the Republicans over there, and he did a wonderful job on that. And um, he has just consistently tried to be for constructive things, uh, not only in his own state, but around the country. He uh, has a wonderful reputation out in uh, Kansas and a very good military record. He was um, in the uh, Judge Advocate's Office of the Air Force. In fact, still is a reserve officer in that area. So I think he would be a very hardworking and fine addition. Well, I might put him on this Equal Opportunity Commission. Well, this would be wonderful. I wanted Marjorie Lawson on there. I thought she was judicious enough and able enough, and I wanted a woman, and she doesn't want to take it. Well, I was, uh, I was hopeful that you would make that kind of a decision, too, Mr. President, because I have a tremendous amount of respect for her ability. I, I'm sorry to hear that she Why don't you give her hell? Why don't you all get me some good people now? I, I, want, I want to try to get this fellow Abrams up in New York. Uh, do you know him? Yes. I don't know him well, but I know who he is. Well, he's exceptional, but he couldn't do it on account of his wife's health. I tried to get Marjorie. She can't do it. None of them won't do it. I've got to get some good people. And, uh, well, would you care to have me uh, call Marjorie? I just wish you would. I wish you'd just call her in and tell her you want to buy her lunch. Uh, and just say, now, uh, you can't emancipate people unless you emancipate. You can't do it over here sitting on some judge. You come do this, there'll be something else come along a year or two. She won't want to be an ambassador, a judge, or something else. We're going to be here a while and tell her that she'll shove her for something bigger and better. But let's get this started off. Get it started off right. She's reasonable. She knows how to get along. She does. She uh, has my confidence, and I think she likes me. She's uh, worked on my Equal Employment Committee for three or four years, yeah. and she was, uh, I thought, very confident. Well, I had four or five people that I could put on. I got to have a woman. Yeah. I'd prefer to have a Negro woman. Wonderful. I would like to. I, I like Marjorie first. I like to take Patricia Harris, but I uh, kind of thought I might get her some State Department because she's got such a hell of a legal background. Yes, she has. She's got all every five eight cap in the country and and all the order to court and everything you got. And she would be could use there. I could take uh, Ms. Watson, who was on the appointment committee, New York husband's judge. She's yes. not as aggressive as they are, but she was, got a master's degree, and she was a she was a social worker, and she stands up and slugs and fights, so when you, when you have to, she got me up time or two, two or three o'clock in the morning, raised metal about <laughs> things, eh? They, they, one or two others, I could take either Sampson out in Chicago, but Marjorie's really my pick. Well, I think that's a wonderful pick. And but I'll, I can't get her done. Well, uh, 
I certainly don't think there's anybody in the country more persuasive than you, but I'd be happy to make another try at it. Take her to lunch tomorrow, go see her, and tell her that I was talking to you on some other matters, and I told you I was disappointed in her. I thought she'd take this to get started off and then go to something else. But she doesn't have to live with it a lifetime. That's right. Because the first year is going to be the real test, and we got to have people that can be firm and fair and uh, diplomatic enough not to just uh, uh, have the roof fall in. And she's got all those qualities. Well, I agree with you. And, you know, I've been hoping to tell you about a wonderful experience I had in uh, Texas, which shows how people can uh, change. I was down in Longview about uh, two or three weeks ago at a Freedom Fund dinner of the NAACP. And uh, a few years ago, I had tried to go to that community, and all of our officers were under arrest. And there was a, an injunction issued by a judge which said that if anybody came to town to hold a meeting, he'd be arrested, so we couldn't hold a meeting. And I was uh, talking about this in my speech and saying how wonderful it was at times of change. There was a judge sitting next to me. And somebody told me afterwards that this was the same judge who had uh, tried to put us in jail before. <laughs> <laughs> the law that one one notice Dunnigan, was it? I forget what his name. He's a young fellow. It was very pleasant. And I Otis Dunnigan, he tried to put me in jail in 1948 <laughs> when I beat him, but uh, the state district judge. Yes, I think he is. That was seem to be about one the federal judge. Was. Oh no no no, he was. A yeah, he, that's Otis Dunnigan. And, and he, well, that's that's from. You think about that and call me back, and I'll do it, Johnson. And you, uh, you all talk to Nick, and I'll talk to him tomorrow and see what we can uh, do there. I don't want to go over his head. I don't want poll tax. I told him I didn't. I said I've been against it all my life. I'm against it now. I want to repeal it any way you can repeal it. Well, I think that uh, we could work out a little formula that would be a graceful way of doing this and not hurt anybody's feelings. It's not going to hurt mine if they put it in. No, I didn't mean you. I've been thinking and others who yeah. might have uh, had different conclusions. Uh, I, I know that. It's kind I just of don't want them to ruin the bill, that's all. No, and we don't either. The Lord knows that because we're so happy the way you've taken hold. I was up there that night. I don't know whether you heard all that loud applause, but I was up there clapping. Well, well, you sure spoke. did. <laughs> sure did. Well, it, there never was a better evening for us than that one, wasn't it? Really great, yeah. The timing was right, too, wasn't it? I thought so, too. The thing that abused me was, uh, you know, uh, some of these people who were supposed to be such uh, segregation, instead of the Ellison and others, I know that they were the first ones to uh, clap you on the back and congratulate you. They were, I think they meant it. <laughs> well, God bless you. You let me hear from you. All right, Mr. President. Thank you.